So what I've done here is I've taken a, an area of the pasture that I wanted to be, be my garden. And it's about, this is about at least three eighths of an acre. You okay, Chev? Good boy. Good dirt, really good dirt. But I wanted you to see what I'm doing here. This is a compost pile. As you can see, it's coming along quite nicely. Um, not doing it the conventional way with forks. Actually, I'm doing it with a fork lift on the tractor. So it uh, aerates it by pushing into it. Basically, this is just the overburden or the um, grass and weeds and whatever else that was growing in the, uh, the topsoil, which is good topsoil mixed in with the green matter. And, um, and it's composting very well. It's going to make some very, very rich dirt. Very rich dirt. So there's different ways that you can make use of whatever chore that you have going on on your garden. So as you're creating your garden, you notice here, I have cleared out an area of the pasture. This was all grass and um, organic. I don't spray anything on this property. It's been this way for hundreds of years. So it's very clean, very organic and um, so I'm, I've got good high nutrient soil here that's healthy. It's gonna be good for plants, got a good color to it. Even have some, if you notice right in here, a little darker area. This is more of a biochard area. And we'll talk about that in another video. But I wanna to talk to you about this pile here. Now this is a large pile. I have another pile that I'm doing back here that I have to mix up. But uh, this particular pile here is where I cut off or plowed off the top grassy layer of the pasture. Now, if you'll notice, I didn't, I didn't get it all. So I have clumps of, of grass that, that are still in the soil here. More so down here than up there. I've got most of that. That lighter area is where I planted onions earlier in the year, but I'm just now plowing all this for the other vegetables. But you can see there is still some, some green matter that for the first year, I'm gonna have some um, weed control to do. Most of the things that I see growing up through, the, uh, through it is Obviously you're gonna see some violets and and some uh, other things you see here in the compost pile that you see the violets growing. There's a lot of violets here. A lot of good organic matter and uh, a lot of wild strawberries, which they're good actually, but have plenty of them all over the other pastures. So. In relation to this, I'm gonna keep turning this this year. I'm gonna keep it turned, keep it turned, keep it turned. And then I'm gonna cover it up with some tarps. As I cover it up with the tarps, it's gonna keep anything that's trying to grow in it from growing anymore. Now I haven't covered it up yet. So some of the green growth you see right now is, uh, it's, it's the part that was on top that still had sun, 
but if you'll notice the areas here that were down below, look how this is breaking up. You can see the organic matter, some leaves, moss, but look at the dirt starting to create from, it is a mixture of some, some dirt already in it, but this is what I would call good topsoil, composted soil that is breaking down really well. Has quite a few worms, earthworms, and um, which is good. Uh, this is uh, the Appalachian Mountains, and I'm at an elevation right here about where I'm standing, somewhere around 2,300 feet above sea level. We get a, quite a bit of rain. This is the first week that we haven't been bombarded with rain in probably two months. So I'll put some water on this and stir it up some more, cover it up and, and let that heat start cooking um, and breaking down that, uh, that dirt, making it good dirt. Now, as that breaks down, I'll be um, adding some horse manure to it and also adding some sawdust to it, uh, some aged sawdust. There's actually a sawmill here close to me. And I'm also bringing in the sawmill, my brother's sawmill. We're gonna be cutting up some, some trees that, are, uh, that have died here on the property, some big white pines. We're gonna use some of that sawdust for next year, but the old sawdust from the, uh, from the sawmill across the street uh, made a deal with them. They're going to be bringing me some, uh, the dark black sawdust moved around and has already composted on their sawmill property. And it's just making a mess, especially when it's wet. And, uh, but it has turned into a really good, rich, um, compost itself. And there's still some more, more composting it needs to go through. Mixing that in with this, this is a, at least one and a half dump truck loads. And again, I have some more up here and I have some more up here as well. So after this year, I'll have all that turned into some good compost and then I'll mix it in with all of this and keep building this topsoil. So, and the topsoil is not bad, it's really good. It, I've, I've got it plowed down um, I'll show you how deep that I have it plowed. I still have the plows on the back. This is, this is the depth that I'm plowing it. So from here, about this depth down to here is about somewhere around 18 inches. And, um, and it's, uh, it's tearing the dirt up really well. Uh, this is a spring loaded um, farrow, so they, if they catch any big rocks or what have you, it's nice that they pull those rocks up so I can manage those. And uh, there's only one area up here where I have a couple of trees inside the garden. It's a white oak and a few maples. I'm not sure if I'm gonna eventually take that out. I think I'll leave it. I figure around the trees there, I'll eventually just plant some flowers and some strawberries, maybe some raised beds and not plow so much around it, but I plowed around it and I didn't hit really any roots. Roots are deep, so I think we're good there. And uh, now right here, these are, let me show you the difference between bought and um, and homemade tomato cages. So these are the bought ones. I have quite a few of these. And after buying them, I realized, hmm, these are not as good as what I could do myself. So what I did is I took what I call hog wire and... I made quite a few of these 
which these are going to be my tomato cages. And I've made quite a few. I've got a lot of them stacked up over here, too. And uh, so the tomatoes that are the climbers, the ones that um, that are non-determinate, meaning that they keep growing and keep growing, I'm going to put them in these. Now, the determinate ones, I'm not worried about so much. I'll probably use the bulk cages for those. But on the indeterminate or non-determinate, whatever you want to call it, I'm going to use these larger cages and keep supporting them as they go up. These are uh, about four foot tall and about 20 inches in diameter. And all I did was bend the wires as I cut them, I bent them, bent the wires around here to hold it together. These are actually much sturdier than any store-bought um, tomato cages. And all I did was use hog wire, okay? That's all I did, it's just it's fence wire. So it's perfect. Uh, if you noticed the areas down here at the bottom, the wires are closer together. And as you get further to the top, they're further apart which is perfect for the tomatoes. So, uh, I mean, you could do it the other way around if you wanted to, but I like the narrower sections at the bottom and the wider sections at the top. Now, here on the lower section, uh, that's where I'm gonna be placing most of the corn. And um, we'll uh, put the tomatoes in the lower section here and then we'll layer the corn. We're gonna have quite a few rows of corn. Then we'll have beans, cucumber, squash, pumpkin, zucchini, okra, um, peas, everything you can imagine. I am thinking about plowing up this bottom area down here and turning it into a feed plot. <laughs> Excuse me, allergies. A food plot meaning up here in this area here this tree line on the back side of it i have another pasture and um think about putting a a few pigs there and uh to feed the pigs out and feed chickens uh this bottom down here will make a great cornfield and uh and also think about putting some high gear in there as well so uh if we uh grow the food because let's let's face it corn has doubled in price in the last few months so we need to do everything we possibly can to uh make sure that we have uh plenty of food for the for the animals and um and i've got the property here to do it and uh may not do all this bottom area in corn and grain but part of it and then part of it i'm probably going to preserve for the chicken tractors so that i can pull them around in that area as well so anyway just update on the garden it's going it's hot today it's supposed to be about 85 degrees in april we had frost two days earlier this week and now here we are at 85 degrees weather is moving around all over the place as far as temps but this is the first window that we've had to where um, I obviously turned the dirt over and plowed it quite a few times earlier in the year. But it has been almost two months since I've been able to plow it and uh, prepare it for seed because of so much rain. I could not get the tractor on the dirt because it was just so wet. And, uh, and uh, even though this is a slope, it slopes down, this is very well drained soil because of me plowing it so deep and it being such a good composted natural organic soil already, um, getting on there with the tractor would just pack the dirt and turn it into a harder clay. And I didn't want to do that. I wanted to make sure that I was plowing at the right time. That's one thing you want to do is to make sure that when you're, um, you're plowing your dirt, that you're not packing it because the plow is pushing through. But uh, take a look at 
this dirt here, as you can see, this is good organic soil, has some biochar in it, as you can see, there's some biochar and uh, clover. So this is, uh, this is gonna be good growing dirt here for, for the summer, summer garden. And, uh, and looking down into the dirt, you can see how the color looks great. You can see a little bit of biochar mixed in with it. Well prepped soil. This is kind of soil, this is kind of soil you want. And, uh, and thank you for joining me on this journey here at Welch Family Homestead. And I gotta get back here on the tractor and get some work done. God bless.